All right, it's the finally Friday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks, and it's been a pretty active day, uh, even more active in terms of severe weather risks than we kind of bargained for. We have not had any severe weather across our area, but we have had a couple of cells that tried to exhibit some rotation for a while. We had just a little bit of very localized wind shear um, across our area that was just enough to produce a couple of pretty scary looking cells for a while. And this one uh, was up in Trumbull County during the six o'clock hour primarily, thanks to uh, Bill who sent me this on Twitter. And uh, this was near Mecca, near the northern end of Mosquito Lake. Definitely a lowering of the cloud base here. You could even say this is a, a bona fide wall cloud, especially right in through here. Um, did not produce a tornado, um, but it did you know, look pretty intriguing for a while on the radar de data. And this was the second um, cell that we had to watch pretty carefully uh, throughout the area today. We had another one earlier on in the afternoon from Southern Trumbull over into Mercer County uh, that did uh, try to rotate for a time as well. But uh, thankfully, you know, up, up at the cloud level, the wind shear remains pretty weak out there this evening. So, you know, anything that was trying to be mischievous was going to have a hard time actually producing a uh, tornado. All right, I was going to show you the uh, wind velocity data during the six o'clock hour here in northern Trumbull County, but my radar data does not seem to want to load. But it was pretty, you know, we, we had to watch it very carefully for a while because, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where it was unlikely to actually produce a tornado, but some of the signatures on the radar for a time, um, you know, we, we had some pretty tight couplets, especially the northern end of Mosquito Lake around Mecca, heading over towards Johnston and Kinsman, and then it kind of dissipated uh, from there as it moved into uh, parts of Crawford and Mercer counties in Pennsylvania. But uh, severe weather or not, uh, we've had quite a bit of rain in a couple of localized spots. Now, not everyone has had these high amounts of rain, but the rainfall totals in northwestern Trumbull have been enough for the National Weather Service to issue a flood advisory. Some radar estimates here. This is around North Bristol, uh, around Route 88, Route 45, to up to almost three inches worth of rain in some localized areas there. Another hot spot today was with that uh, cell I mentioned previously that was rotating for a while. It produced some heavy amounts of rain around the Hubbard area. Some radar estimates here of pretty close to one inch worth of rain. A lot of that occurred middle of the afternoon today. So around the Route 62 corridor, 304, pretty close to I-80, especially south of I-80. Um, some of those heavier totals from earlier on this afternoon. All right, as we have transitioned now into the evening and approaching sunset, uh, the severe weather risk was small and it's over with at this point. Uh, the risk that is not over yet is localized flooding because we've got some bonafide tropical downpours across a good chunk of the area. Now, I'd be most concerned around a north of Interstate 80 this evening for some localized flooding problems because those locations have already had a decent amount of rain today. So some of these tropical downpours can certainly exacerbate any localized flooding problems. So in a place like Hubbard, and once you get up towards Warren, and then especially up towards Mesopotamia and Bloomfield and Northwestern Trumbull, this rain could be problematic. You know, we had the, the summertime heat yesterday. We don't have the heat necessarily today. I didn't get into the 80s today, but we have higher humidity levels today. I'll real quickly show you the uh, dew point temperatures um, because, you know, this is kind of more summer-like than April-like with dew points in the 60s. So these, you know, cells can be efficient rain producers. There's a lot of there's a lot of atmospheric moisture to be wrung out this evening, and all of this is heading off to the uh, east. This is a you know pretty dynamic system uh, heading off to the east, and no surprise in April you've got a big temperature change on either side of the uh, system, and this is what's heading our way tomorrow. So we're going to stay mild this evening, and in fact most of the night will be pretty mild. But our cold front arrives right around daybreak Saturday morning, and what you see out here in in Green Bay and Milwaukee that's kind of the ghost of Christmas future for us. This is our weather uh, tomorrow. It is not going to be. A very nice Saturday. As far as the rain tonight, it'll be most uh, persistent and heaviest over the next handful of hours this evening. Once we get past midnight, the rain will taper off. You'll see that on high resolution future cast. Here's our downpours for the evening, some localized flooding issues. Rain and rumbles of thunder continue through maybe midnight or so. And then as you head out the door Saturday morning, it's going to be gloomy. It's going to be cloudy. There could be a sprinkle or a touch of drizzle, but nothing all that heavy. Our thinking on Saturday has not changed in terms of the overall flavor of the day, and the flavor of the day is going to be clouds, but I can see where the clouds break enough at the last minute just before sunset, especially in Ohio, maybe not so much in Pennsylvania, but especially in our Ohio counties. You might see an hour or so where the sky brightens considerably at the end of the day on Saturday, but temperatures are really going to struggle. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of Saturday in the 40s to around 
50 degrees. High pressure builds in then for Saturday night into Sunday, and that means a clear, calm night Saturday night. Probably enough to send temperatures down into the mid-30s, and in some of the coldest nooks, might be some light frost Sunday morning. I don't know if it's frost advisory material for the Weather Service offices to uh, go ahead and issue a product, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was some light frost here and there uh, in the colder spots first thing Sunday morning. So if you already have hanging baskets out and that sort of thing, maybe not a bad idea to bring them in for Saturday night. I don't think it's a killing freeze or anything like that, but some light frost, something I can't rule out. Boy, it's going to be a nice afternoon on Sunday. I'm speaking of nice weather. Monday also looking fantastic. Now, Monday will not be so fantastic across the upper Midwest. This will be a pretty good severe weather outbreak across uh, parts of the northern Mississippi Valley, the upper Midwest. And this same system that impacts those areas Monday heads our way on Tuesday. And I still think this will be a pretty active day on Tuesday. The overall severe weather risk and coverage may not be as high as on Monday in the upper Midwest, but as this system comes east on Tuesday, I think severe thunderstorms are a pretty good bet in a place like Detroit, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, down towards Louisville, maybe back towards St. Louis. And for us around eastern Ohio and western PA, I, I think we're going to have some thunderstorms, and I, I think the ingredients will be there for all the severe weather hazards. That means large hail. Maybe not just the small stuff. There could be some big hailstones with these storms late Tuesday. Damaging wind gusts, of course, and this is the kind of setup where there could be isolated tornadoes as well. The threat may be highest, uh, closer to I-90, from Buffalo to Erie to Cleveland, and then maybe down the I-71 corridor, maybe highest out there. But it's I think it's still going to be pretty elevated across eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Long-range temperature trends, it's going to warm up nicely ahead of that system for Monday and Tuesday. We'll get into the 70s Monday and lower 80s on Tuesday, but then 20 degrees colder on Wednesday. Uh, back to below average for a day at the very end of the month. The first few days of May, not exactly warm, but not exactly real chilly either. I think we've got some 60s in our future towards the uh, tail end of next week. And I, I still think that first weekend of May, we have some risks that it may be a little cooler than we're bargaining for right now. But you look at the longer range forecast issued by the Climate Prediction Center today. Here's the 6 to 10 day outlook showing basically a neutral you know, outlook across our area. And that indicates that there probably will be some cool days mixed in in that 6 to 10 day period. And that would cover that first weekend or so of May. But this is the 8 to 14 day, day outlook. The warmth starts to build back in. This is weeks 3 and 4. Let's say right now, odds are starting to be more and more in favor of a, uh, a warm compared to average month of May. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some cool days here and there. Another thing we'll be watching as we head into May, while the beginning of the month may be kind of active, there may be a drier period here. This is the 8 to 14 day uh, precipitation outlook today, and I think this is the right idea. Uh, weeks or, or days 8 to 14, so basically taking us from that first weekend of the month through the following week, maybe kind of a drier pattern than we've been in of late. It's been, a, of course, a pretty active pattern across our part of the country so far this spring. All right, I'll keep you updated online and on 21 News tonight at 11 o'clock when it comes to our downpours out there this evening. Hope you and yours have a great Friday night, a great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday for an update on Tuesday's severe weather risks and much, much more.